NASCAR has been racing since 1948. Ever since NASCAR was established in 1947, it has had a ton of races held at different tracks, defunct. And still around. And only a select number of states have never had a cup race. However, there are lower series races. And the state I want to talk about is my home state of Utah. There wasn't a NASCAR race in Utah until they had a race on August 3rd, 1996. The NASCAR Southwest Series went to Santana Raceway, which used to be in Springville, Utah. Santana Raceway was a one half mile oval. Basically, this was a short track. The series had two races there. One on August 3rd, 1996, and another one on August 9th, 1997. Sean Monroe won the 1996 race, and Doug McCoyne won the 1997 race. Some notable drivers that raced at Suntan Raceway include the late Chris Trickle, Matt Crafton, and Kurt Busch. After the race in 1997, the now-defunct NASCAR Southwest Series would not return to Suntan Raceway. Suntan Raceway would close in 1999, Due to the popularity of another track I will talk about later, and the NASCAR Southwest Series would fold after the 2006 season. Then, in 1999, NASCAR had a race again in Utah. This time it was the then called NASCAR Winston West Series, now known as the Arkham Nards West Series. The race was at Rocky Mountain Raceways in West Valley City, Utah, a less than a half mile paved track. The first race there was in 1999 and was won by Butch Gilliland, the father of David Gilliland and grandfather of Todd Gilliland. There would be races at the track from 1999 to 2004. Bobby Dodder, Sammy Potashink, Austin Cameron, and Scott Lynch would also win there. Rocky Mountain Raceways would not be on the schedule for the NASCAR West Series in 2005 and would not be part of the schedule for the series after that. Rocky Mountain Raceways would close after the 2018 season so commercial development could be built there. However, the track is now occupied by what seems like warehouses or something. What a shame. The most recent track a NASCAR series has been at in Utah is the Utah Motorsports Campus. The track was originally conceived as a novelty track from Larry H. Miller. You see, about like 2003-2004 in that time frame, Larry H. Miller was the owner of the Utah Jazz, the MLB minor league team, the Salt Lake Bees. Eventually, the track became a $100 million plus project and the track would be completed in 2006 with the go-kart track there being opened in September of 2005. The track has a big road course and is one of the biggest tracks or facilities for that matter in the US. Also the track is located in Grantsville which is 33 miles away from Salt Lake City. NASCAR would not be there until July 14th, 2007. No, it was not the NASCAR Cup Series. It was a lower division series known at the time as the NASCAR Camping World West Series. The same series that had races at Rocky Mountain Raceways. The first race there only saw five lead changes, one crash and four cautions. At the end of the race, it was Jason Bowles who won. The series would have one race there every season from 2007 to 2014. The 2008 race had Todd Souza win the race. It was a lackluster race, having only three drivers swapping the lead. In 2009, the race was basically dominated by Patrick Long. In the race, four drivers had engine issues. Patrick Long would win the race. In 2010, 
The race would be broadcast on TV for the first time. The race was broadcast on speed, via tape delayed, I would imagine. For most of the race, Greg Persley and Patrick Long would swap the lead. At his home track, Michael Self would suffer an engine issue and would finish in 28th place, last of all drivers. With two laps to go, Patrick Long would have a flat tire, which basically sealed the deal for Greg Persley. Greg Persley would win the race. Unfortunately, the broadcast that is on YouTube cuts off with two laps to go, so we can't see the finish. Yeah, yeah. with that flat right front tire, you know that thing was dragging everything in the front suspension, so Patrick probably felt like it was, it was better to pull that car off the racetrack instead of grinding all the front suspension off trying to get back to pit road. He was the defending champion of this race and really, I thought, had the car to beat here today. There is always the chance that someone out there has a broadcast of the race in its entirety and would post on YouTube, but I don't see that happening. In 2011, the race was moved to April. Also, they would race on the shorter 2.2 mile layout of the course instead of the massive 3 mile layout. Greg Persley passed Eric Holmes with 5 laps to go and won the race. In 2012, a big shock happened because Patrick Long failed to qualify. You know, the guy that won the 2009 race. Anyways, Greg Persley, the defending two-time winner of this race, started on the pole. There were only two cautions, both for stopped race cars. With two laps to go, Greg Persley passed Austin Dane for the lead and won the race for three straight wins at Miller Motorsports Park. For 2013, the race was moved to September. Derek Thorne started on the pole and would lead the first 11 laps before being passed by Cameron Haley. Greg Persley would take the lead over Cameron and lead for 16 laps. However, Cameron Haley got around Greg Persley and led for 9 more laps. Andrew Ranger eventually passed Cameron Haley for the lead and would win the race. In 2014, Greg Persley would lead all 43 laps until David Mayhew took the lead to win the race. There were four cautions for debris, a shred tire, and a stalled car of jacked sellers. I was at the race, but unfortunately, I was not able to see the whole race. Here are some photos from that race. Unfortunately, they did not have a race at the track for 2015. By this point, Larry H. Miller had died because of diabetes back in 2009. In 2015, the Larry H. Miller group of companies decided to not renew its lease on the track. So the last day of operations would be on October 31st, 2015. On July 17th, 2015, it was reported that several companies were interested in buying the Utah Motorsports Campus, at, also at the time it was known as the Miller Motorsports Park, and keep the track running. On October 13th of that year, it was announced that they approved the sale of the track to Milltime Investment, which is a subsidiary of Chinese car company Geely, or Geely, however that is pronounced. However, on December 17, 2015, an order was filed vacating the sale of the Utah Motorsports Campus, saying Twila County shortchanged another bidder by unlawfully selling the track at price significantly below market value. On February 1, 2016, Milltime took control of the track and the property. This was temporary for 2016. The sale would eventually be completed in November of 2018. 
The series would not come back until September 2016 for a doubleheader. The first race started with Ryan Partridge on the pole. On lap 2 of the race, the caution was displayed for the number 50 Chris Eggleston being stalled in turn 9. Ryan Partridge continued to lead. On lap 15 of the race, the number 39 of Salvatore Ilvano spun in turn 5, bringing out the second caution. This would lead into the third caution of the race for halfway break. After the break, Ryan Partridge continued to lead. He would lose the lead on lap 22 to Todd Gilliland. Todd Gilliland would lead until lap 26 before Cup Series driver Noah Graxon would take the lead. He would go on to win the race on lap 36. The second race saw Ryan Partridge start on the pole. He would lead the first five laps of the race. Todd Gilliland would take the lead on lap 6. The first caution would come on lap 8 for the start car of the number 86 of Tim Spurgeon. The race restarted on lap 11. But on lap 15, the race had second caution of the day due to the number 14 car of Stingray Rob being stalled. The race restarted on lap 17. Riley Herbst took the lead on lap 18. A caution was displayed for the halfway break on lap 19. The race gets underway on lap 20 for only one lap before a caution is displayed for the number 20 car driven by Cole Moore. The race gets restarted on lap 23. Riley Herbst eventually loses the lead on lap 31 to Todd Gilliland. Todd will lead the race until the final turns on the last lap. 16-year-old Todd Gilliland out in front of 18-year-old Noah Gregson. Here we go. Only a couple corners left. We'll see what Noah does into this left-hander. He's right there with him. Filling up those mirrors, showing the nose inside and outside, right up underneath that rear bumper. Here he comes to the inside oh, again. He's up on the curb. Up over the curb in contact, and Gilliland goes sliding off the course. Gregson out into the lead. An extremely aggressive move for Noah. Got up on the curb, bounced up into the side of Todd Gillen. He's going to take the win with a very aggressive move. I'm sure Todd's not very happy about that. Checkered flag, and Noah Gregson sweeps the weekend here at the Utah Motorsports Campus. Unfortunately, the entire broadcast of both races from NBC are lost. The first race was on YouTube in its entirety on the YouTube page Logan Seabile. But the race is not on there anymore and it was not known why it was taken down. It seems that all videos from the Logan Seabile YouTube page have been taken down. This means there could be a lot of lost Canaan Pro Series West and East broadcasts that were once on YouTube. The broadcast seemed to have also been on a website called onlinehome.us. Unfortunately, that link from Racing Reference only leads to a dead link. As for the second race of the doubleheader, that race seemed to have also been on the onlinehome.us website. Of course, the link from the Racing Reference website only leads to a dead link. The only piece of footage from any of the broadcasts is the finish of the second race of the doubleheader. The great finish was uploaded by YouTuber Crash Racing. Hopefully some days these broadcasts will be available to watch in their entirety. Only time will tell. The series did not return to the track until June of 2020. The race was originally going to be in May of 2020. However, due to the worldwide phenomenon that was happening at the time, the race was postponed. It also got a second race because of probably the Sonoma race being canceled. This could have been the first live sporting event in Utah since the start of the worldwide phenomenon to have fans. For the races, they decided to race on the 2.2 mile layout of the track. In the first race, Blaine Perkins started on the pole and led the first five laps before a caution was displayed. The number 77 of Takuma Koga stalled. 
the race restarted and Blaine Perkins drove off the track. This allowed Jesse Love to take the lead. On lap 13, a caution was displayed for the number 6 of Trevor Huston being stalled, and a fire broke out. I was at the track and I did not see a fire break out. race restarted on lap 3 and Jesse Love led for two more laps to win his first race in the newly renamed Arkham Menards West Series. In race 2, Blaine Perkins led all 30 laps to win the race. The number 27 of Bobby Hillis Jr. had a mechanical issue and the number 77 of Takuma Koga had a handling issue. Unfortunately for 2021, the Arkham Nars West Series would not go back to the Utah Motorsports Campus. They have not been back since. In fact, the Utah Motorsports Campus is a shell of its former self. As of right now, there are no actual racing events that people could go out and see. You have to be part of some event or whatever to be there in person and see stuff. It's not like actual motorsports series, which is sad. Hopefully the Utah Motorsports Campus can have real racing there in the future. Because, like I said, it was a one-of-a-kind facility in the U.S. And one of the biggest racing facilities in the U.S. for that matter. If you like this content, then like, comment, and subscribe. I have fun NASCAR videos each week. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.